Oh man, if I have to hear my little cousins ask me about my hot sauce video one more time, I don't know what I'm gonna say. I made a video of myself eating hot, uh, hot sauce, like, probably two years ago on this channel, before I started all my movie stuff. And all those views on that video are just from them. You can look up Morgan Film Fan Hot Sauce if you want. But uh, that's either here nor there. I just also walked in pretty much a snowstorm for 10-15 minutes. The traffic is horrible, but getting to the movie review, I wanted to review The Haunting in Connecticut for a while now for a few different reasons. First of all, the first time I watched this was a while ago, and I rebought this, and I bought uh, uh, the second one, Ghosts of Georgia, which I'd never seen, so I still haven't seen it. It's on my shelf, and I'm going to be reviewing both. Um, I remember this film being like a religious horror, and... I liked that aspect of it. I don't remember it being amazing, and I remember it having a lot of flaws, but I always got this vibe from it um, that was really entertaining. It was really powerful. Like, it was just a very powerful film. It's not the greatest film in the world. It's not um, revolutionary. You know, there's so many haunting films and possession films, if you will, that are better. But I don't know. This one had a power to it, and I, I really, really enjoyed it for many reasons. We got also, um, we got Virginia Madsen. She's from Candyman, another horror that she did. She's also from the film Sideways, which is one of my favorite films. And um, she's a really great actress. And we got um, Kyle Gallner as the main kid in this film, who's really good. He's good in general. Um, he was in the Nightmare remake, hated that remake. He was also in Jennifer's Body, which is a great film. Uh, but he's a recognizable face, and I always, I always, he always pops up, but sometimes I forget his name. <laughs> I just know him by face. But uh, regardless, um, what we have here is we have Kyle Gallner's character has this kind of rare form of cancer, and he qualifies for a research team uh, studying the cancer that he has in his body, which is in a town in Connecticut, which is family who's kind of financially struggling. Uh, you know, is deciding to move to because this is a great opportunity. It's just they're, they kind of have a, they have to live on a tight budget to get there and live there. Uh, they end up finding this house, although with like with a great price of rent, and they can live there for a very, very decent value. Um, usually this is how haunting, <laughs> haunting house um, films start, like your Amityville horrors and stuff like that. Wow, this affordable house. I wonder what's wrong with it. Yeah. Um, so it's 1987. Doesn't really feel like 1987, but that's when the film takes place. And apparently it's based on a true story as well, which is cool. How much of it is true? I don't know. Um, at the beginning, they show during the credits these uh, photos of uh, post-mortem like, photography where people are taking pictures of their loved ones while they're dead. And I've heard of that somewhere. I think studying through the internet or maybe another YouTube video, but that's always been kind of a subject that I've heard about and as creepy as it is, um, is still kind of interesting and intriguing. Kind of like a, a last farewell to a loved one before they, you know, either get cremated or um, put into the ground. But the idea of it is really creepy and very effective for a horror movie. So I like how it starts off that way too. Um, but he, the, the, the kid, I forget his name in the movie. I forget a lot of, oh, I wrote them down. So Matt, I forgot that I wrote the names down. Matt, played by Kyle Gallner wants to like set his bedroom down in the basement and there's this really creepy room in the basement that's locked and um, it has like a bunch of glass windows on it but uh, the door's locked and he can't get in but uh, he wants to make his uh, his room down there eventually he does get into this room and he learns th and uh, basically as the film goes on they learn that uh, this house was um, like a funeral home, and there were a lot of seances performed there. Um, another uh, actor that shows up in here actually is Elias Co. Kodith? Elias, I can never pronounce his last name. He's also in so many things. It's Elias Kodis or something like that. Uh, he plays this like kind of preacher guy that understands science, seances, and stuff like that, and. Um, talking to the dead and all those kinds of things. And the film goes into this place where um, you can, what do they say? They call it ectoplasms, which is um, using a medium during a science. And an ectoplasm is when this kind of uh, like this black, like 
stuff comes out of your like orifices like your mouth and ears and eyes and sometimes apparently according throughout some seances this has actually happened and it's like wavy like um not tentacles but like almost smoke like really thick smoke but in different kinds of forms sometimes it looks like solids and then like vapors and stuff like that it's really really weird it didn't look good in the movie because the film is absolutely filled with cgi and that's how they portray this stuff going on is with cgi so it was kind of wonky in that uh in that way but uh but it was still very interesting and then what happens to matt too when these hauntings start to happen these ghosts are all trapped in this house and they want to escape so the story is kind of generic in the way they direct it but um, Matt really starts to kind of lose control of his sanity and his sanity starts to go everywhere. And the thing about Matt's performance, or Kyle Gallner's performance I should say, is the way he looks and the way he acts and the way he portrays his hauntings is really, really realistic and really creepy. Because I've seen people before in my life who have been through different things in their lives and like will just have that gazing stare and um, you know they're just focused and will like mumble sometimes and you're just like what is going through these people's minds it can be really really scary and there's a scene in particular where Matt is with the cousin that uh, is living with them they're uh, around the same age and uh, and the little sister too and they like to play hide and seek and all that and the older cousin is trying to like kind of deal with the younger sister while dealing with Matt who's seems to be you know all over the place and um sometimes blacking out and, and not you know the um, the cancer treatments is also known to cause a few like delusions and hallucinations so uh it ends up the story ends up going in like that direction as well a few times but uh the gore in this film there's certain really creepy scenes there's scenes if you're really squeamish of like eyelids being cut out and um, parts of people's uh, skin like like pieces of people's skin being like cut with scissors and stuff like that uh, during the like funeral scenes because this used to be a funeral home and um, scenes of like just food lying around showing up like randomly rotted when it was f like fresh 10 seconds ago kind of thing um, but in the end, basically, one of the spirits ends up kind of leading Matt to discover all these bodies that basically made up the walls of, uh, of the entire house. So he starts banging through the walls of, of the house while the house is on fire, mind you, and he discovers this massive, massive, massive amount of bodies in the walls. So, that being said, a lot of... <laughs> Other films have borrowed from this one, and I wouldn't lie to say that this film hasn't borrowed from other films. Um, it's not the most unique thing in the world, but there's something about the sum of the cinematography, and there's definitely something about the performances and the story all around that um, is really creepy. Not creepy, well, yeah, creepy, but uh, powerful. Like, it's very um, heavy hitting. Even though it might not have been executed in the way another director could probably execute it, um, it's still there, and you can tell it's there, and it's still an enjoyable watch, at least for me. Uh, maybe the religious stuff may be a little bit heavy-handed uh, heavy for some people. I like the father's character. I forget the name of the father who plays him, but he's going through his own demons because he stopped drinking, but because his son is going through all this pain and torment and uh, trauma, it leads him to start again for a bit and there's scenes where he starts to act out on the family and act out in general and uh, you know drive when he shouldn't and stuff like that uh the ending scene too is uh, is one of those moments where there's like uh virginia madsen makes kind of like a little uh narration slash monologue and it kind of wraps everything together because uh i'm not going to spoil the ending when it comes to kyle's situation or yeah, Matt's situation, sorry, I keep saying Kyle, the actor's name, Matt's situation, so I won't spoil that, I'll keep this pretty spoiler-free other than the general sense of things, if you haven't seen it, so, otherwise, like I always say, go see the movie, then watch the review, whether it's spoiler-free or not, but, uh, yeah, I would say I liked the ending, it's not, like, 
a revolutionary film, but it's a film that definitely does its job, and I really like The Haunting in Connecticut. And I'm really curious to see how The uh, Haunting in Connecticut 2 Ghosts of Georgia is, because the title's intriguing, and I know nothing about it, and I really like going to films blind, so uh, that intrigues me for sure. That's all I got on that film right now. Uh, subscribe to Morgan Film Fan if you'd like to listen to my voice, or if you'd like my film reviews. And I'll be back with more when I can, so stay tuned for that. Take care, and cheers.